finally, uh, finally, finally, we've got the highs, lows, disappointments, surprises, yada, yada, yadas of last year. Oh boy, here we go. Quick fire round, I guess. Well, not too very fast, but quick. Quick air fire, then. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Sort of. Uh, yeah. Um, the auction house has reached its final 10 seconds. <laughs> I suppose I will go first, seeing as I was the one to go last with the albums. Um, so, album of the year is between three. Black Star, Uncanny Valley, and Brotherhood of the Snake. Brotherhood of the Snake. Here's the thing. I cannot choose between those three albums. So, this is going to be a rare occasion where my top album for the year is three different albums of fairly different genres. They are all six out of fives. In fact, gun to my head, if you were to really push me, I would say Black Star peaks out. But I feel that's a bit unfair because... Given the circumstances, it's a bit unfair yeah. to compare albums when the artists are still around to the Swan Song album that was mm. specifically written as such and influenced by everything going on around him. So, yeah, I'm just going to say that those three albums are all my number one picks for last year. Uh, worst album for the year? I think everyone who's listened to the Clusterfuck review already knows what's coming. I think everyone here knows what's coming. Tell us, Uncle Ed. Mimi, Mimi, Mimi. Or however the fuck it's pronounced. What's the name of the album? Give me the heroin. Whatever. Weeb language. I... I cannot stress this enough. I hate the album with the fiery intensity of a million foreman grills. To the face. Yeah, being able to cause such anger is a beautiful thing. Hmm? I caused this. It is wonderful. I want to see that band, that album, burn in a pit of rusty flames! I knew you were going to be at the rusty flames again. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the rusty flames moment. Well, it got established this year, so might as well have the year-end wrap-up mention it. <laughs> um, But yeah, I just... I hated that album. It was it was one of the odd occasions where I have to take a break from listening to the album because I was just really annoyed by it. It annoyed me. And it's one of the rare occasions where I would have actually preferred to be bored. This is actually why Emma's album came out with a more positive review because... After listening through that complete trek, I, I welcomed boredom. I, I embraced it. It was like a newfound child that I'd found at the doorstep, and I'd come in to nurture it. And the child was... The child was Dystopia by Megadeth. <laughs> um... But hang on, I thought you said that you found me, 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 me boring because, like, not long after that, you asked me to give you a, a taste of Nana Hera's Dempa music and uh, it was horrible for you. Utterly terrible. But you said you enjoyed it because it made you feel. It was just that, that was pure hatred. So, w was I getting the metal up with Ava? I don't think it was Ava. Um, uh, it no. was definitely after me, 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 but what was the reason then? Um, me, me, me. Beaker. I'm just going to refer yeah, to them yeah, yeah, as okay, Beaker. Yeah. Um, it's one of those weird instances where you start out annoyed, then you get bored, and then you get annoyed again. Okay. 
So I was getting annoyed because I was bored. Oh, okay. So with Emma, it was basically, it was a pure boredom. I wasn't annoyed. I was just sort of like, okay. Whereas with Beaker, it was just sort of like, um, but yeah, I've already ranted enough in the Clusterfuck review. Um, and here. It's weird for me not to go on a rant tangent in the these year-end wrap-ups. Um, biggest surprise of last year was Baby Metal. That was my... And this is a positive surprise. That was a genuinely surprisingly good album for me. I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I'm not going to say it was a perfect album. There are a couple of tracks on there. Well, we've already raised the spectre of the Rusty Flames, and that's because of the ones that are either collaborations with Dragon Force or Dragon Force influenced and whatever. Maybe Dragon Force touched anything as a mistake. Yeah. I mean, I remember one reviewer saying about how Baby Metal's work with Dragon Force was amazing, and I was sort of like, if this is the standard that you're going by, the fuck are you on about? Well, the good news is, it sounds just like Dragon Force. The problem is, it sounds like Dragon Force, which means it sounds like everything else they've done. Yeah. <laughs> just have to have slightly different vocals. Yeah. And to be fair, nobody notices the vocals in their songs anyway. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is with Dragon Force, it sounds like someone revving a mini motorbike played through an auto tuner. Yeah, pretty much. Like, when I went to see them, which was a long time ago, but people pretty much were only going to see, like, Herman Lee, and that was it. Bro, look at these amazing guitar skills. Look at these... Yeah, no, technical expertise is not the same as artistic merit. Yeah. I mean, Loss by Ramstein. Now, that's a really simple song. It's very stripped down. It's pretty much all acoustic instruments. A bit of keyboard work here and there but that's more played piano style as opposed to keyboard style and that is really really good it it really shows the skills of Ramstein as a band so it's it sort of that's that's when technical skill and actual merit meet up dragon force all they have is technical skill. There's nothing to really show them up as anything more than a bunch of people who learnt how to play the guitar and drums really well. See, but you said I'd take loss. Uh, I immediately let the control <laughs> delete. I'd sooner, I'd sooner read the loss comic than listen to Dragon <laughs> That means nothing to me, I'm afraid. Oh, well. Oh, Vienna. <laughs> Well played, Dan. <laughs> but yeah, um, and Nick Cave stuff. Most of that is really stripped it's very down. Hmm? It's very minimalist. Yeah, it's all very stripped down, and it's all about framing. And I, I talk about framing because it's easiest to talk about it in terms of filming and things like that because it's all similar. St- Styles of things. It's all about framing things in a way that shows the best qualities, not just of technical skill, but also of writing skill, uh, understanding of the subject matter, all that sort of thing. And Dragon Force just doesn't have that. And for Baby Metal to collaborate with them, it felt like they were making a misstep in trying to show that they were more than just a gimmick. I think that's also them trying to carry on with their appeal to the West, probably, isn't it? Because the thing is, they've got to prove themselves on semi fronts, because the thing is, first of all, they had to be like, we are actually metal guys. Mm. Um, And on top of that, they've also got to be like, um, because the thing is, they were accepted as idols already. The girls were in an idol group before they were in a baby metal Mm. Um, so they didn't have to prove themselves there, they, but they had to prove, because of that, they had to prove that they were real metal, and then on top of that, they'd be like, well, we're not just Japanese guys, like, I think it's usually unheard of for uh, a music group from that kind of background to actually try and appeal to the West, mm. it doesn't, because it just, usually it just doesn't mesh, so, you know, it really was just, I don't know, it, it was like unraveling string and trying to work out, you know, which bit leads where to make sure it actually fit. 
Yeah. I mean, some of the... You saying about appealing to the West. Now, one of their songs, I, I suppose you could argue, kind of drove them a bit further into niche territory because it sounded very much like Bear Moth. And so it's sort of like, okay, you're already framed around being an idol group that does metal. And now you're sounding like black metal. The thing is... It's not a metal group that has idols in it. <laughs> like, like, based lady baby, may they rest in peace. Hmm. I don't care if they do. I think rest in peace. Um, Wrestling in peace, Mark. Wrestle in peace, yeah. But what I was going to say was, it would have made so much more sense. For, there, there was a way more obvious guy to collaborate with if they wanted to collaborate with someone. And it would have been easy, I think. Yeah. And that is Marty Friedman. Yes. <laughs> Because he is a weave as it is. He spends a lot of time over there. Like he was, uh, he was on uh, anim- uh, the Animella Festival in twenty fifteen, hmm. and which is an <laughs> anime music festival. And there he was playing uh, the Yuri Yuri theme tune on his guitar, and, and, and you know, as everyone danced out in their cute school uniforms with their horns and stuff. Like the guy is willing to do dumb, goofy idol stuff. Yeah, and he's got talent. And he's got, you know, probably more experience with that kind of thing as well. You know, I think he has the obvious choice. Uh, Dragon Force, by comparison, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's beyond be me because I don't generally listen to Dragon Force. If you want to go on the sort of widespread Western appeal, yeah, could have done uh, um, what uh, Mamoru Clovo did. Oh, uh, yeah, teaming up with Kiss. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been well, great. Well, yeah, especially because, I mean, Kiss of all, you know, uh, Thingy teamed up with uh, the, the Detroit Metal City movie, didn't he? Which yeah, was, uh, Gene Simmons. Yeah, Gene Simmons, yeah. So there are, you know, there is a fair bit of crossover with metal in Japan. So, you know, it's not like Dragon Force was, you know, the best option necessarily, or even the easiest option. It bothers the mind a little bit, but honestly, I can't begrudge him for it. And, you know... In a way, even if it wasn't it wasn't a success, I'm gonna applaud Dragon Force for stepping up to the plate. Yeah, you know, it's a, it was a, it's an unconventional project to do a team up with, and you know, considering that Baby Metal's reputation is very much a such a marmite thing, it feels like. Yeah, uh, I think it, you know it was perhaps a bit of a risky move on their part to sort of just be like the ones to go. Oh yeah, okay, fine. So you know, if nothing else, kudos to them for that. Um, yeah. Not much more to say, really, other than I really hope that um, Road to Resistance, that is, it's, no. Resistance is the Dragon Force song. That's the Dragon Force song. It's, uh, not, it's not your fault, they have resistance, resistance in a bunch of their titles yeah. and things, don't they? Yeah, Metal Resistance, even. It would be good for that to be more of the benchmark for how they're going to progress. Hmm. If they go in that kind of form and that kind of quality, then they could go pretty big places. Well, they already are in pretty big places. But they could go in pretty big places with legitimately good quality music as well. Yeah. So. Well, when they're making a, a fusion thing like this that hasn't really been attempted before, it's, it's going to be like Bambi on Ice at first, isn't it? Yeah. You're asking people to do something that they have not had previous experience with. Um, is that making a new ice cream flavour? You know, it's like sometimes you get a winner, like, you know, peanut butter... You get you get win a combination of flavors like peanut butter and chocolate, at least in my opinion, and you get bad ones like snail. Oh uh, well, uh, well, I was gonna say more like those dumb jelly beans that got released the, uh, earlier this year, which were a fat dumb fad. Or popcorn Tic Tacs, which we are still trying to shift, and nobody wants them. Yeah, what? Like Venus whirls that taste like mince pies. It's... Well, yeah, all I can say is we had these dumb jelly beans. Have you, have you seen these things? They're like they're jelly beans, except they're a game that they look similar, and uh, some of them will be like tutti frutti, and other ones will be tasting like uh, vomit. Oh, so Bertie bots every flavour's then? Oh, there's yeah, there's but there's under any time called Bean Boozled, and yeah. I, all I can say is I was never expecting it, the vomit one to actually legitimately taste like vomit. Well done. I've never eaten them again. Well done. Your, your campaign failed. <laughs> People aren't buying them anymore because no one wants to eat vomit again. Uh, and it's the same like that, right? Well, you're kind of accusing of being false advertising. Well, no, it's not false. But what I mean is, when you're creating a fusion thing like that, you tend to stumble blindly either into something amazing or something terrible. There's, I don't think there's really much room for in between. 
Yeah. But my point is, they have every reason to be clumsy, and that first album can't necessarily be held against them too hard. Yeah. There's also some good stuff on there, just uh, it's vastly outweighed by the bad stuff. As, the point is, is the way we regard the first album, we will change in retrospect based on how they progress. If they were to just sort of slump and be shit, we'll be like, well, they were always shit, whereas if they do carry on being good and only get better, then we'll see... Like, this was just the first baby steps. Yeah. I mean, it's even just standard bands. It's very rare to find a band who their first album is absolutely amazing. I mean... It's even worse when their first album's really good and everything they do after that is shit. Like, Dolphic, for example, comes to mind. Because Dolphic's first album is really good. Uh, since Ball starts off. And then the second album, it sounds like a boy band and it's trash. Then they didn't make anything else after that. It's like, why? What happened? You changed your style and now you sound like shit. Yeah, they just do really solid first album. If you're calling it changing your style, then arguably Baby Metal have had many albums beforehand as a result of them being in a different idol group with the same members. True. I think the interesting thing about uh, Metal Resistance is the fact that they've... different types of metal that's in that album is rather impressive. Because they have like black metal, there's folk metal, there's thrash metal, there's power metal, there's progressive metal, it's all in there. Mm. Oh. There's straight up rock ballads, there's... Yeah. A smorgasbord of metal, very metal if you will. Mm. Mm. And it really worked for them. So. Um, biggest disappointment of last year. Dystopia by Megadeth. R.E.P. and Pepperoni. What? Never mind, you can do your thing. Um, so, I'm not exaggerating when I say it took me three attempts to actually listen through the entirety of the album. Because the first tra- three tracks really bored me. Then for like five tracks it sounded alright. Um, it just... It was... A lot of it felt like same shit, different day. It, it felt like Megadeth had not progressed. It, like they were playing it safe? Not even sure. playing it safe. Just they hadn't progressed... Musically, lyrically, technically, anything. I mean, say what you like about even the worst of Metallica's stuff. At least you can identify differences. If you told me, if I was going in blind and you told me that some of the songs on Dystopia were from some of Megadeth's first few albums, you could fool me. They are that similar to some of their early stuff that I was just, I was really bored. And if you end up bored by Megadeth, there's problems. Um, I know, Pierce, that you thought it was all right. Only all right, though. Yeah. But, so, yeah, it's not bad, but it doesn't really stand out, which I suppose is kind of the same with, you know, towering the same with everything else I've done. Yeah, I mean, I should not be willing to give sort of, like, to... 2.5 two star ratings to Megadeth albums. That should not be happening to me because they were one of my first metal bands. You know, they've gotten me through some shit. So I shouldn't be willing to go, yeah, this is this is a 2, 2.5 at best. I It, it was such a frustrating listen through. And I, I mean, I was genuinely going to Pierce. Okay, this is improving but I don't see it lasting through the next seven songs. And it didn't last through the following seven songs. Uh, I think it almost managed it, but it was like, the first three tracks were boring. Track four to track nine or ten. No, it's track nine were decent. And then onwards was boring again. How unpleasant. So it's just... As I say, it was a massive disappointment for last year. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Uh, who wants to go next? I'm going to go next for Yeah, okay. go for it. Might as well go in reverse. <laughs> well, not really reverse, but... No, it's not reversing. Um, the other day, I was thinking... Oh, I don't know what my favourite album of the year is. It's probably Perturbator, Lincoln Valley, or Alcest Kadama. Hmm. But then I decided to re-listen to Cut of the and Julie Christmas as Mariner today, and I remembered how good I'm good it is. So I think my best album of the year is probably goes to that, actually. Yeah? It's just, even 
uh, approaching tradition, the fourth track is the weakest track on the album, I'd say. It's still really quite good, and I think it just helps build up for Cygnus, which is the final track, which is one of the best on the album. Mm. So it's not necessarily that good in itself, as a separate entity. If you actually listen to the album as a whole, which I generally do, you know, there's, well, it's a tradition, literally, as the title would say. So it just kind of fits for me. Everything else in that album is stellar, so... And, I mean, I think God did ever really put out a bad album. Tunnel Kingdom, back in 2008, I think it was, was probably their weakest. I thought, eh, well, this is uh, a lot bad, I guess. But it disappointed me back in that year, and I was wondering whether they were going to carry on. It took ages to release Vertical, and that was really a return to form. Then they announced they're doing it with Julie Christmas, and I was like, hmm, that's an interesting combination, and if they can put it off, it'll be amazing. And, well, they did, so... <laughs> Um, with that album, we're definitely on the same page with uh, track four. I was just sort of, I found my my mind was wandering a bit whilst listening through that. It's sort of like, yeah. well, it is thirteen minutes long, and this is the second longest song on the album. Mm. I think it's a little bit shorter than I wouldn't have any problems with it at all. It's gonna kind of, it's such a long song and probably the least interesting musically as well. Yeah, it kind of you know, meanders and... It's a little bit too long for its own good. Yeah. But on the other hand, the rest of the album is just so bloody good mm. that I can figure out for that. But yeah, I definitely have Perturbator and Alsace as my follow-ups, I'd say. Because mm. those albums are both fantastic as well and, well, both following on from the previous works of theirs I've heard and just being really solid. Mm. So, especially with... Uh, um, Perturbator, because everything he's put out has been great and seems to be steadily improving as he goes along. Yeah. So. Well, there's nothing to stop you from having three number one albums. Well, you, you, I think you did, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Colin just about edges it out for me simply because, well, mostly because of Wreck of Essence Needle and um, Cygnus, which are just amazing. Yeah. I think those two just push it slightly over the edge into being an actual outright favourite. Mm. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, Worst album. We know what I'm liking, but I don't necessarily dislike things much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, don't know, I would probably have to go with the super obvious and also double up as my disappointment. It would be Linda Sterling. Mm -hmm. I think it's, ah, uh, half that album is so bad. Yeah. Oh, third of that album. <laughs> it's annoying because, like, a good half of it is really good, and another little bit of it is still decent, but the one third of it is full of collaborations and stuff. It's just so unlistenable but it pisses me off yeah it's just i i remember i tried listening to some of the collaborative efforts and i was sort of like not bored i think a couple of them are boring and a couple of them were just i was listening to them and get out like halfway through at most and be like fuck this song get out when i don't think there's any examples really on my entire albums list on my player, which I have like 3,000 albums in here. Mm. Like, other than Believe on the New California album, I haven't deleted any songs from any of these albums <laughs> until the Sterling. Well, I've deleted like three other songs. <laughs> it's like, no, fuck off. I don't want to ever listen to you again. You're that bad. Mm. And so it's also the biggest disappointment because Shatter Me and her self title albums are both really good. Yeah. And her solo stuff here is also really good. So it's just supporting that the rest, a good chunk of the Albums is ruined by people getting in the way. You can barely even hear Lindsay's playing in those songs as well. Yeah. He's kind of just lingering in the background somewhere, maybe now and then. It's like, this is not why I bought. Oh, I didn't buy the album. I probably will get it on sale at some point. I'm not paying for a price for it. He was saying, this is not why I got the album for. Yeah. I mean, if you consider with Shatter Me, I mean, she has collaborative bits on that, but that's vocalists, that's not instrumentals. Which just sounds very much like it wasn't just vocals on this album, because it's so different to everything I've done, so little actual violin going on. I think they must have had a bigger hand in it, rather than just to providing vocals. Yeah, I mean, Shatter Me, she had uh, Lizzie Hale on the Which title course, track. Is, is quite like Lizzie Hale. Yeah, and I mean, when I saw that, I was sort of like, wait, is that, is that the same? <laughs> okay. It's that Lizzie Hale, Hale Storm thing. So, thank you, that's cool. I mean, I'm not that hot on the track itself. I mean, I, I feel it has a bit too much uh, dubstep wobbing and whatnot, but it still is identifiably Lindsay Sterling's stuff. Hmm. That's not much a new one, such a, a problem. Hmm. If I heard them on the radio or whatever, or someone played them to me without any context, I would not even think it was her. Yeah. There's pretty much nothing there that implies that it's a Lindsay Sterling song. Yeah, I mean, 
certain songs do still feel very much like hers on that album, like um, Mirage does. Certainly. I, I mean, I absolutely love Prism. Prism is super good, yeah. Yeah. I quite like um, Arena and the Phoenix as well. Yeah. Funnily enough, I was about to say Arena. I think it's the first of them, the song first song of them I heard because she released it early on. And I was like, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, those songs are amazing. So it, it's one of those you really get a. So what happened with the other songs? Interference. It sounds like. Yeah. Basically, what we're saying is, Brave Enough is the third Lindsay Sterling album, just like Alien Three it was a third Alien film. And <laughs> both of them were ruined in what they could have been by different from outside forces. It's like they got RKO'd out of nowhere. <laughs> you can't see me. Almost done. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> different wrestler. But yeah, unfortunately, I would have to say that. On the disappointment, I'd probably also mention one of the Momera Clover's albums. Mm. I can't remember the title of it. I haven't bothered to memorise what it actually means in Japanese because it just wasn't a very interesting album. The only thing I've ever memorised from it at all is the Kiss collaboration. And it's like, oh, I suppose they cover the new Sailor Moon song they did as well, it's alright. But the rest of it is just so forgettable. I haven't heard it, so I can't comment. And the thing, luckily they put Amaranthus at the same time. Amaranthus is really good. But it feels like they missed Amaranthus all the A-sides, and then the rest of it was just leftovers from, like, oh, well, I might put all these leftovers inside their album and release it, plus a couple of singles. And it kind of feels as if that's what happened, and... They probably shouldn't have been released, honestly. Because other than a couple of singles and maybe like one song, it's just. Ugh. Mm-hmm. It's really quite bad. Yeah. But anyway, as for biggest surprise of the year, um. Hmm. I don't really know where to go from that. Um. I was the biggest surprise of the year was Theo Fanny actually releasing Times End 2. <laughs> it's been in progress for like five years. I was like, is it ever going to happen? Is it actually going to exist? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll be finished uh, when I'm done with it. I'm kind of busy doing other stuff, so it might not be here for a while. It actually came out, which is a surprise in itself. And it's also super good, but that's not so surprising. It could be worse. It could be time. <laughs> this is true. Who could, could be a new tool album. Ah! <laughs> it still hasn't happened. So we'll be waiting forever for that. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much of a surprise, honestly. Most of the stuff I heard, the stuff I knew about already, and had at least some kind of expectation for, which it kind of met. Um... So I might actually have to mention Neil Krasnick, actually. Mm-hmm. Seeing her, you know, being a Eurovision entry, that generally doesn't mean they're necessarily that good. But I was pleasantly surprised with her album, actually. And I wish it was actually a lot better than the song she put in Eurovision. The Eurovision song was actually pretty distant as it was. So that's kind of a surprise in itself. Um, also, since this is kind of that area, I was going to mention Best Song of the Year. It's probably going to have to be Us by Aima. So because her vocals plus the main guy and musician from Winter to Shigeru collaborating together is super amazing. I love it. Oh, I know that happened. I need to. Ch- I'll have to check that out because mm. that voice, them voices are. Oh, why did I not know this was a thing? Did you tell me about this? I don't remember you telling me about this. Ah, <laughs> it's pretty damn amazing. Yeah, it sounds it. Well, I, I assume it sounds it, but it sounds like it sounds it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's probably my collective opinions of what's best and not best. All right. 